All right, let's go because you know what I came in to do. I don't get paid for overtime. I'm here to fight. But to me, it looked like Wilder turned up because Saudi money brings him there and there was nothing left to Wilder. Well, Wilder turned up. Of course he turned up for the money. They all did. That's what they get paid for. They're professional. Of course. But I didn't think at the end of the day, he looked like a shot fighter. And on the other side of the coin, you have Deontay Wilder, who even himself in his post-fight conversations said, I just couldn't pull the trigger. Now, that's usually code, unfortunately, for a fighter. You know, the definition of a shot fighter is when they see the opening, but they can't release the punch. I think he's done. I think from that performance, it sucks just to think, you know, that everybody expected a little bit more. Everybody was always said, oh, he'll knock out Anthony Joshua, or he'll knock him out. But I don't think that will happen. Um, Wilder grew old in front of our eyes. There is no doubt about that. And don't be surprised. I know they're saying he'll come back and he'll be better. He's 38, nearly 39. He's lost three of his last four fights. That performance, I believe, should put him into retirement. I see it being a long way back now. I think that Joseph Parker will be the guy that has retired Deontay Wilder. It's a fork of the red man, because he's done. The only way I see Wilder coming back is if he can embrace the criticism. This is the place he's at now. He's probably getting it worse than Anthony Joshua ever got it. But he's got to embrace it and understand why it's happening. This isn't the draw with Tyson Fury. Because even though Tyson was inactive, he was the man to break Vlad's 10-year reign as champion. This is different. Deontay was a huge favourite, done a lot of talking pre-fight, and not just about himself or Joseph Parker, about Anthony Joshua. Him and Jerome Miller, who both lost. Wilder's got to hear it raw. No excuses. He's 38, won one fight out of his last four. He's been inactive. His skills are deteriorating. And there could be some physical decline there too. He needs to understand the gravity of his situation. That people are not hating. They're describing what they think they see. That he's washed. And only then can he start to make the steps to possibly becoming a top 5 contender. Because he's, he's not top 5 in at least 3 of the sanctioning bodies no more. Yeah, Ring Magazine got him at number 9. I don't know what the WBC are doing. Maybe they take a little time to update their rankings. He's got to accept a few things. That AJ right now is ahead of him in the pecking order. Now that doesn't mean he has to bow to AJ. Although he did curtsy to AJ when they was in London. He gave him a little curtsy. That don't mean he's got to bow to him. It means you can't call shots. I Be call shots round here. you got to accept where you are though. You know, not only AJ. I mean, Martin Bacoli's jumped over him as a higher ranked contender. Joseph Parker will too. His only lifeline now is Turkey, Alasheikh. He did put up that photo of AJ and Wilder. And that could be a lifeline for him to get back in the game. But the truth is, yeah, all this, the world should jump to attention after that performance and he should just walk into the AJ fight with no resistance. That's ridiculous. He's got to understand he is mediocre right now. And it's all his doing. It's no one else's fault. The AJ fight has fell through temporarily. And it's his fault. It's not AJ. AJ signed up for the fight. AJ was going to do his interview. Wilder was going to come to the ring. I was going to bring both of them together. There'd be some social media worthy moment. And we'd be building towards March. Anthony Joshua was taking that fight. It was done. He was taking that right. fight. Got to wear your defeat. He's got to own his defeat. He's got to wear it. To the what I assume is the minority who still think the fight should go ahead. Who's going to bankroll the fight? See, it's alright saying, oh, the fight should still go ahead. Who's going to bankroll it? Has Al Heyman still got that 50 million that a lot of people say AJ turned down? Is Al going to bet on his boy? We can forget about AJ Wilder, can't we? AJ Wilder, yeah, yeah. I mean, to resurrect that, there's got to be some sort of outstanding performance from Wilder. It's just that the people who wanted to put the fight on no longer see that as the fight that it was. <laughs> like I laughed to myself when I heard the words coming out of Joshua's mouth saying, this fight can still happen. I know that Wilder can come back. Sure, he wants him to come back. He wants him to come back and fight the same sort of strategic fight, throwing no punches against him that he did against Joseph Parker. Look, nobody wants to see that fight now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no one. He said he lost his kid of instinct, Wilder. Well, the easiest place to find it is within the question why he doesn't want to run back the Parker fight. Why is he so anxious to tell us that nothing really happened in the fight and nobody won? 
Why is he so anxious not to run it back? Why is he so anxious to deflect his abysmal performance onto why AJ doesn't want to fight him? That's where the killer instinct is lost. It's lost in denial. Get back, you know, whether it's Lewis versus Schmeling, Ali versus Frazier, Ali versus Norton, Lennox Lewis versus McCall, Rutman, get back is the first thing that should be on his mind. That guy beat him in the ring and he's trying to tell everybody that it doesn't matter. That's a problem. And if you're a fan of his and you think that's a normal reaction for a boxer, you're out of touch. You're just as deluded as he is. But what it is, is facing up to the Parker defeat is admitting that he doesn't have the standing that he once had. That he's not on the same level as Anthony Joshua, who he's absolutely obsessed with. And I'm not saying it like it was AJ who beat Wilder on Saturday, but I'm saying they're moving in two different directions. And Wilder cannot stand not to have his name connected to Anthony Joshua despite them heading off in two different directions. No fighter probably goes in the ring 100%. But he was probably 60% against Joseph Parker. But his ego won't allow him to say he needs to be 100% to beat Joseph Parker. And that's lazy. It's lazy thinking that he doesn't have to prove himself to get such a massive bag from the Saudis. You know, like, the way some people have been talking about it. Yeah, yeah, AJ should just fight him next. Like, the Saudis ain't some sand N-words as some people refer to gentlemen from that part of the world who just throw money about. They're not stupid. They're good businessmen. They think that the Saudis don't understand their boxing. You know, like... <laughs> They're not just throwing money around. Nobody's throwing money around like that. It's funny how people think the promoters and the networks just have money to throw around and not know what they're throwing it at. Who's going to bankroll it? Are you? The only people who talk about instant rematch are people who don't purchase the pay-per-views. They stream it illegally. So it's hard for them to put a value on certain things and connect to who has to pay for things. It's American boxing fans, while the fans mostly... Who say, yeah, why don't you just put the fight on? You heard at the start of the video how many people in the industry and media were saying Wilder is a shot fighter. He's finished. Nobody wants to see that fight now. Absolutely no one. He looked like a shot fighter. Now, maybe he isn't, but that is the perception right now. No one believes what the LDBC believe about Deontay Wilder. No one outside their group, which is mostly black Americans, believe what they believe. Yeah, The event holders don't believe that he's worthy of this big bang and the big spotlight right now. He's got to go and prove himself. If that group of black American boxing fans want to see AJ versus Wilder, they're going to have to tell Al Heyman to get the 50 mil they say AJ turned down and make an offer to AJ. And unless the Saudis are paying him more, then you'll get the fight. It's all right saying you want this and that. Who's going to bankroll it? This is the reference point in the video. Who's going to bankroll it? You know? There was a big bag of money for Wilder to fight AJ for Undisputed in 2019. And he fumbled that too. And he snitched on himself as well. That he would have got more for fighting AJ than he would for Tyson Fury. But he would swear blind that AJ doesn't want to take the fight. It's January 2024. If he's not announcing a fight by March, April, I'm just going to assume he's done. You know, I remember watching Marvin Hagler doing commentary for the BBC when Lennox got knocked out by Ruttman. And Lennox was in the ring, eyes looked glazed, had this smile on his face, if you could call it that. More like an awkward grin, actually. Paraphrasing, I know this guy can't beat me. Yeah, I want the rematch. Because automatically, he was thinking about the adjustments and corrections he was going to make. Straight away, he was thinking that. Straight away. That's how a real fighter responds to loss. Wilder's response to the Parker loss is the response of someone who isn't trying to improve as a fighter. It's hard for Wilder to take responsibility for what happened. Let's keep it a buck like um, the sun just revealed. He blew the hundred million pound showdown with Joshua by losing to Parker. A hundred million. Aside from Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, that's unheard of in boxing. Unheard of. For no title. 100 million pound bag. So now, what is next for AJ? Well, I can tell you what fight Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren want. Now they're pals. They want Fury versus AJ. They want that fight there. But they're also targeting a big fight for AJ 
And the names they're talking about are Philip Pogovic, Jile Zhang, and Francis Ngannou. I think Zhang would be the likely opponent. Ngannou is an outside pick. Philip Pogovic, that fight won't happen unless the vacant IBF belt is on the line. The Zhang fight, however, means that Frank Warren can exercise his options on Zhang to make the fight and Eddie Hearn with Joshua. And then the winner out of AJ versus Hergovic or AJ versus Zhang will go on to fight the winner of Fury and Yusek. Here's the thing though, with the money that the Saudis are putting up, there is going to come a point where the belts are irrelevant. You know, if they're going to be talking about they're going to strip people because they don't make mandatory, nobody's going to care, yeah? If necessary, you could even see Tyson Fury vacating the belts if he beats Yusek to try and set up the Joshua fight. At the moment, Wilder is in the worst place out of the three heavyweights we've been talking about, let's say since 2016, that's AJ, Fury, and Wilder himself. You know, Wilder said he was betting on himself when he didn't take the zone deal. And that was 120 for three fights. He blew on a $100 million fight where more than likely it was a 50-50 split. So no, he doesn't want to take responsibility for that. Who would? Who would? The Saudi money brings up endless possibilities. And some of you are going to say, well, Tyson isn't going to vacate the belts. He already said he's going to vacate the belts if he wins and let someone else have a go. That's what he said. And I don't think he's going to retire. He's going to select what fights he wants to take. And he will be pressured into taking on Anthony Joshua in an all-time classic British showdown. That's if Joshua beats Hagovic or Zhang, which isn't foregone. If Fury can beat Yusek. Big lucrative fight. Now, the Saudis' money can solve a lot of issues in terms of making fights. But it still doesn't satisfy everybody because there are going to be a contingent of British fans who buy tickets regular to fights like events like this. And they're going to be saying, well, this is a big all-British showdown. They're taking the fight away from us with the bag. Yeah, that's what the bag does. Last October, the first British title fight was fought overseas in Saudi Arabia because of the bag. Fabio Woolley destroyed David Adelaide for the British heavyweight title. It was in October when Martin Bacoli fought on the undercard of Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. So we're assuming Martin got a decent purse. And it leads to the question, why is someone who just fought on a Saudi bill on one of the biggest events in boxing of the year, signed to Boxer and Sky Sports, why is he having to resort to putting up a GoFundMe to finance his career? He's had it up maybe two days now. He's raised 70 pounds. The target is 100,000 pounds. There's no shame in it. There's plenty of people, potential entrepreneurs, musicians, entertainers, etc., who have made GoFundMe pages just to get a kickstart, start up a workshop. Musicians have used GoFundMe to finance studio costs for albums, etc., etc. And it's not like he's um, looking for a handout. He's looking to finance his career. There's no shame in it. But, you know, Billy Nelson manages and trains the guy. Why are you not getting him no sponsorship deals in Scotland? And why are Ben Shalom and Sky Sports not looking after the guy if you've signed him? This guy's the number one ranked heavyweight in the WBA. He's the biggest hope that Sky have for any of the heavyweights on their roster to get in any big fights this year. Now they're going to come out and say, we've paid him what we've paid him. Signing fee, living expenses, whatever, right? And it was his decision. But I'll be curious to know what has prompted this decision. I'm just curious. Bit nosy, to be honest. But it is in the public domain, so it's fair game to talk about is that somehow they're going to have to work in the atmosphere because there is a deathly hush throughout some of the fights with the Saudis, the well-mannered people that they are, sitting back and enjoying the entertainment. I don't know how you get around that. I don't agree with that, um, Jim, and I'll tell you why. It's, it's no different when you have two foreign fighters fighting in the UK on the card and the people are engrossed in watching the fight because it's not a lo a, 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 somebody who they can get behind as a nation. They don't, sometimes that happens. Some of the fights there, they were very much behind and there was a lot of cheering for some of them. But other fights, there weren't. But that's nothing unusual. And I, I, I don't quite agree with that. I was there, so I know there was an atmosphere there. Um, 
Well, then how do you square that then, Frank? Because I, I watched it. I watched it from the very get-go, coming out of the Spurs-Everton game, put it straight on, watched Junior Fay versus Frank Sanchez, then on to Mark Demore versus Hergovic, and on and on and on, because, because the event was billed so well and marketed so well. But if you haven't got Saudi fighters fighting, you're always going to have that challenge. And it, it did feel, well, no, 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 it no, did no. feel like there wasn't an atmosphere. It did feel like you could hear doors shut. Well, that's not, that's not true. I was there. It certainly was not like that. I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, the early fight, Sanchez and Far. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, uh, an American fighting a guy from New Zealand. And that's what it was. Of course, there'll be Saudi fighters will come through eventually. That'll take time. But the Saudis got behind AJ. They, got, they certainly got behind uh, Deontay to start with and then switched their allegiance over to Joe Parker. Without wanting to pee on your parade, which is why you're becoming a little bit prickly about it, it did lack atmosphere. It did feel like it came across with a lack of atmosphere. Well, you're, you're, not, you're not peeing on my parade. You're just peeing on, peeing on an event, which was a good event. I mean, you're just looking for a problem in the event. That's, that's how it is with you. And that's so it's only praise then, Frank? It wasn't like that. You weren't there. I was there. No, no, I, no, I, no I Frank, that. We, get, we, we get that. We're, you know we're, what? We're, you know what? You're looking, you're look, all you're looking for is a problem. And I don't get that. No, it's, well, I, could, I, could, I, could, I could expand no, upon it, Frank. I could expand upon like it and that. say... If there's a big problem in the future, then don't buy it. TalkSport doesn't have to buy it. No, that's not it's the point, the Frank. Point, you, Frank, you can't just come on and have one-way conversations about how you see the world. It's a two-way conversation. I think it's a brilliant event that you put on. I think well, you work the you Oracle, <clears> but I also think you, you, <clears throat> you observe it, other things. I could turn around to you and what say... What would you much rather do? The crowd... The crowd a noise, a massive noise, what you think is a massive noise, or would you much rather see... I, no, what, I, I, what I would say, Frank, I think, I think it's a different atmosphere is what we're agreed on here, because, for example, when Simon and I were ringside at, at Fury White, it was one hell of an atmosphere that night here in London. And it's not the same... Was, our perception is it's not the same coming out of Riyadh. It was two British guys fighting each other. That's what it was. That's what it was. You know, I've got to tell you, it's pretty, I don't even want to get... It's a pretty ridiculous conversation I'm having here. They were good fights. I'm into boxing. I mean, what the fights... You're into listening to crowds. I mean, you know... No, Frank. You know, cut, cut it out, Frank. You want that's, to have a debate that, that's not true, Frank. I, I've got to tell you, I've got better things to do with my time than to, to have a debate about... How, how did you think AJ came through it, Frank? Sorry? How do you think AJ came through it then on the night? I'll tell you what, sorry about this, but to Daniel W... At this stage, you, you need to look for a new sport. Because if you're saying that the Saudis have money, but this card and atmosphere is dead, you need to find a new sport, bro. He said, what? He said that the atmosphere and the, and the card is dead. You need to find a new sport. Nothing yeah. that boxing could, could do for you, ever. Yeah, get away from us. Yeah. I mean, £19.99 <laughs> in the UK. You, you need a new sport, man. There's nothing, there's nothing boxing can do for you. Yeah, please, get away nothing from us. Nothing boxing can do for you, bro. That's it. There's still people left that want to watch, okay? Just leave us alone. It's been a damn want... good card. I mean, listen, man, we've had knockouts, early knockouts. We've had. You, you, um, you want to jump off a cliff? Get away from us, man. Yeah, and we've got some good Why fights left on the atmosphere? card. Why is the atmosphere so important? Didn't you just see that fight? <laughs> like, <laughs> the fuck do we care about that? A million punches. <laughs> and then Dubois, like, showed mad heart. Did you see Caballero's performance against the finger? Yeah. And Chai's knockout? Why are you worried about atmosphere? You <laughs> <laughs> sound like Ross Adams. <laughs> oh, what an oh, atmosphere. Oh, what an atmosphere. Oh, what an atmosphere. How do you atmosphere? <laughs> <laughs> we we'll get some, we we'll get some cheerleading no, girls in, in, in the ring during the break. Nah, I tell you, what, Daniel, 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 Daniel. No, I'm, I'm not being honest. Don't depress up the, the team. This is a good card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't, don't, don't depress up the, the screen. Don't depress it. Up. Let me ask everyone on, on, on the card. Hi, am good card. Extremely good card. The best card I've ever heard of in my life. I'm 43 years old. Virtuoso. Good card. Yes. I heard some fucking upsets that ha have taken place, and it really came out of nowhere. It's suspenseful. Anthony. Damn good card beats. We've, we've seen um, Caballo with some skills, dishing out a school in. We're seeing my man, at least your guy, OMJ, Upper Tire, deliver right. a brutal knockout. And we've just seen a war. What more can we ask for? And we've got more fights to come. Chat section. Let me know what you, what you think. Right, Stephen Robinson in the chat. Great card. Jam down. He said, Beats, the Saudis may have money, but Cristiano's dress sense is terrible. Who's that, Ronaldo? Probably so. I don't know. I don't know. You must be jaded with boxing, bro. You must be pretty jaded. 
LT, good card so far. DOB nearly says beats. Daniel W is a bigger up, up B. Okay. <laughs> Lennox, he says great card. Everyone said great card so far. And okay, my opinion, it's been a great card so far. I see Daniel yeah, the best the win. Caballero's like boxing was fucking beautiful. Was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. the, the mob got exposed. Jai's knockout was like scary. Even Frank Sanchez, when he started put, putting his punches together, looked okay. Okay, you see the highlights you on mean? Twitter? Jail. Beats 20 oh, pound well spent, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, 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 for me as well. 20 pound well. Sylvester, good card. Daniel, DLB newly says, Daniel W is bugged out, B. Yep. Avalon, I thought the first few fights were mismatches, but it's heated up now and everyone's on it. GC Demopko, he says, can't stand the negativity about this card. Yeah, I, I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. I just, I just found your, co your comment strange. Like, just bringing down the vibe. I mean, the reason why it's there is because they paid for it. Even like though somebody said in the thing, he, that he wants the O2. Boy, Eric Gisora. They don't do that over there, bro. They don't no, do that. No. They come there, you know what I mean? They don't do that over there. Damn. This is Turkey with um, Christian Ronaldo. Damn, man. They, they stupid rich over there. Man. You know, boxing, boxing events... You get dinner events like Joe Cordina, his last title defense in Monaco. It was in a casino. And like, there were people when I was going live, oh, there's the empty venue beats. Like, because they think I'm a Macron fan. I realized you guys don't know nothing about boxing, do you? It's a select event. They don't want a packed arena with people screaming, War Chisora and Sweet Carolina. They don't want that. It's a bit more of a sophisticated affair, I guess. A bit poncified, if you like, but that's what it is. Why would the atmosphere affect you if you're in your house? And nobody who attended the event said, oh yeah, it was really shockingly devoid of atmosphere. How can you just finish watching Dubois versus Miller and not be amped up? Like, people like different things. But like Frank Warren said, they were looking for something to pick at. That's what it felt like to me. But if you're going out there as a boxing fan, you're going to go visit some of the artifacts, the culture, the history, the mosques whatever activities they indulge in. And by all accounts, people have a great time over there. It's gonna keep you more than occupied. And if you're a boxing fan and you're watching Dubois versus Miller or Jayo Pattaya sparking out Elis Zorro, AJ putting on a vintage performance, Joe Parker pulling off an upset, Caballero pulling off an upset. Are you really worried about people screaming and singing songs? You see, that's where Simon Jordan gives himself away. That he's not a real boxing fan, that he would pull that up. That was more of a concern to him. We're more concerned that you give us the fights that we want to see. If anything he was going to complain about, he should have complained, how comes AJ and Wilder are on the same card and they're not fighting each other? That's a valid boxing fan complaint to me. But the atmosphere... atmosphere. I played you a little excerpt from my life when I was covering the Day of Reckoning. And somebody called out the same thing Simon Jordan did. The atmosphere is dry in there. And they're watching from fucking television in the UK. I didn't even have the commentary on. You know, it's like when we was in lockdown. And I was watching Warrington versus Lara. And I was watching AJ versus Pulev. I think they let a thousand people in to watch AJ versus Pulev. That was a special exemption. Dillian versus Povetkin. Match from headquarters in Brentford, the Fight Cap series. I'm interested to know if you purchased your pay per view for Dillian versus Povetkin, first fight, or AJ versus Pulev, did you make your decision on purchasing the pay per view because it was going to be an empty arena? Or because you wanted to see the fight? It just seems strange to me. Absolutely strange. Watching a fight from television, you're affected if there's a crowd in there or not. That just seems fucking weird. No, I wanted to see Povetkin versus Dillian because it was a great matchup. I wanted to see AJ defend his titles for the first time since he won them back. I wanted to see Warrington versus Lara. Now, the lack of atmosphere, some boxers said, yeah, it did affect their performance. But others says, no, it didn't make a difference to me. But you as a spectator from your house, I want to hear the crowd singing Sweet Caroline. Listen. If you turn over to BBC, you might hear The Voice or ITV. There might be X Factor. I'm sure you hear some singing. If you need singing that bad. But this is boxing. 
I don't know, you're at home. You must have a few um, devices which you can play audio and video. Just go on YouTube and find a video where they've got crowd atmosphere if you need that that bad. And then you're sorted. Have it in the background and carry on watching the boxing. When I made the complaint in the chat section, I was thinking, I haven't even got the commentary on. I've got the volume off. <laughs> Me, this I watch boxing most of the time. So. <laughs> Listen. Sometimes, like, if I'm not going live and I'm watching boxing, sometimes I'll watch with the commentary on. If I'm not scoring, I'll have the commentary on. Because sometimes, you know what I mean, like, it can get a bit devoid of human interaction. I'll admit that. But you've got the commentators giving you the action and the pundits letting you know what's happening all the way through the event, in the ring, outside the ring. I don't know what to say, bro. I don't know what to say. Started off in the 20th century, now I'm in the next one. Still rock the fly shit, ain't trying to impress them. These niggas talk a lot of shit because I let them. But I could blow these niggas up, I could caress them. I mean, crush them. Righteous, but I lust them. Niggas talk about me, they don't even discuss them. And it's disgusting how I put the shit together. Canvas with my Chuck Tellers, I don't ever rock the leather. These niggas gonna fall like a sudden drop in weather. They got a couple lyrics, but they just not as clever. I make the whole game pause. Like a rain delay Pull my pen out Blow up like a hand grenade They say I'm like an evil gen That straight tango ray But you can never truly guess What a lame must say Got them wildin' in the street Like when the Phillies won And ain't nobody smoking me I'm like a Phillies blunt Beef like a condom They scared when they pop off Treat you like a coupe Can't wait to chop your top off They not J's, little nigga They are knockoffs Marv Albert on them All I do is shot call Car shots These niggas faker than some small cops Got a buzz, that shit spreading like the smallpox They gave me the ball, they put the game in my hands They said you the man to put the fans in the stand That mean the pressure on, but I ain't got no hypertension That guy that used to be your favorite, it's I hate to bench him My ascension to the top, I feel it's predestined You say this nigga ain't sick, you better retest him I'ma stretch pussies out, y'all some C-sections I ain't never ran, not even in elections You only hard around your homies, gay erections The game mine, I got my motherfucking name etched in Got the street sign, the block monogram Been fly so long, I ain't never trying to land Was fly since the dot peeped at my sonogram I could pull a bitch if I was in a 40 Cono van How you doing J5? I'm surviving My team going to the top and I'm driving I peeped the game and saw a spot with my name on it Wiped the track off, it's crazy how I came on it so far, gotta look up in the stars for him Like a high jump, must elevate your bars to win So far, gotta look up in the stars for him Like the high jump, must elevate your bars to win That means they never gonna win I'ma never let them catch up <laughs> Every time they think they getting close I just pull off on them, jet speed they ain't even close, cause I'm way out of the stratosphere Fuck a Facebook, I am updating my status here Catch me on the block with my homies talking big shit Cover up my face because the 35th district Know me and they know my work, they know I be in beast mode Know I play the game good, like I know the cheat code We used to be Negroes, funny how we niggas now And since we embrace that, funny how they dig us now And they wanna ride with us now I keep the door closed, get them niggas out of here Need that room for more hoes Catch me at the dice game, talking, throwing door blows Taking all that mortgage money, making houses foreclosed. I don't reinvest that, I use it for more clothes. Keep the 4 4 though, more money means more woes. Now it's obvious I'm dedicated, I should be educated, but I never made it. And this race is for the fittest, call us races that don't fit us. We just hate them when they hate us. In the faces of these critics, they be saying, We too radical, we should just bling more, we should tone the hooks down, maybe we should sing more. I just tend to disagree. This should be the theme song for whoever grinding hard. Tell them haters dream on. They can never stop us, they can't even slow us down I ain't gotta tell them, really think these niggas know it now Real niggas hold us down, got a new motive now Mystery decoded now, enough lyrics to throw around Know how to kill a track and I been did it When I hit it, shit is killed, can't even let my friend hit it So far, gotta look up in the stars for him Like a high jump, must elevate your bars to win So far, gotta look up in the stars for him Like a high jump, must elevate your bars to win So far, gotta look up in the stars for him him. Like a high jump, must elevate your bars to win. So far, gotta look up in the stars for him. Like a high jump, must elevate your bars to win. Live, J, uptown. <laughs> the 
Delirious 44. Yeah.